Today, we're gonna to look at the types of governance tools you need in your automation toolkit. So let's jump straight into it. So hiring or training a developer to build automation may seem pretty straightforward. However, the running of automation projects to be able to scale is a completely different story. Automation delivery requires control and consistency so that you can be certain that at the end, what you've built works well and is fit for purpose. Delivering an automation project requires four sets of tools. Find, design, build, and launch. So let's take a look at these and the methods in which you can use them. Find. So this stage is about identifying and assessing opportunities. You're looking for potential opportunities for automation, potential project. You want to assess the suitability of a process. Is it suitable for automation or whatever intelligent automation technology you want to apply to? But also you want to make sure that the business is ready. So you want to use something like a technical questionnaire to check the technical readiness of your team. Are there any pending changes to the underlying applications of that process? Or are there any issues with regards to setting up the infrastructure? This is taking a look at things that could potentially slow down delivery, making sure the process owners themselves are ready. Is the process owner available for the project? Can they commit sufficient time to your project. This is looking at, okay, we know it's suitable for automation, but is it actually a good project? Is it right to do this right now? So when you're looking at process suitability, it's important to have a checklist, a standard set of characteristics that a process should have so that you know it's suitable for automation or machine learning or natural language processing. Have that standard checklist that you can tick off or you can rank the different characteristics of the process to see is it suitable and how suitable is it. You're also gonna need slide packs because let's face it, you can't automate on your own. You're going to need the staff team to be at least a, a little bit knowledgeable on, on how intelligent automation tools work and how they can help you to identify the process opportunities. And you may want to take it a little bit further by giving them the insights on how to assess whether a process is suitable for automation. When they identify opportunities, you can be confident that these opportunities are the right ones. You may also want to use workbooks that staff can use as you guide them through the workshop, root cause workshop, process design workshop. It just educates them that little bit more on how to take control of transforming their business processes and their working life and making them feel empowered with the know-how. So as discussed in this stage for assessing and analyzing processes, you want to use workshops so that you can engage with the team to make sure that you're working on the right process and to assess a long list of processes in a short period of time. But also there may be cases for interviews. For example, your solution architect may want to interview the IT team or the application owner to see what needs to be done to gain access, to set up the right infrastructure. But also your analyst team would need a third method, which is document analysis. And this is where they're going out, they're doing the pre-work, making sure they have some sort of background understanding of the process before they engage the team in a workshop or even an interview. The next stage is design. And this is where you define the process, the as-is process. What do they do now? What does the team do now? And then you streamline the process by removing the waste, and inefficiencies using lean thinking. And then finally, you design the solution, the 2B solution. What does the process look like when it's automated? Because it's not best practice, it's not best automation practice to automate a process as is, because you will inherit a lot of waste from the original process. So you wanna remove this first with lean thinking. So once you streamline your process, you can get more out of the automation as the automation requires less effort, less effort for the developers to build it, 
and less effort for the robot to execute. So in the design stage, you'd use what's called the PDD, the Process Definition Document. And this is the analyst's core tool that they use to capture all the details about a process. The as is and the to be process, the keystrokes, the clicks and keystrokes, what, how the process is triggered or scheduled, when should it run, and the notifications and alerts when there's a, an exception or when it's completed. So the PDD and what's called the keystroke document capture all the details of the process. And then you create a process map which shows the before and the after design of the process. And this is a visual way of describing how the process flows and the decision points that the robot has to take. And finally, when you've designed the process and you understand a bit about what needs to be built, then you can create your business case, running some cost benefit analysis. How much does it cost to build this? How much time are we saving? How complex is this process? And what is the return of investment if we automate this? And this is compiled into the business case which you use in this stage as well. And finally, the last tool in this stage is the test cases. So your users would create user stories, what they want the robot or the automation to do. And on the flip side of that, you'd create test cases from this. What do you want to test to make sure that the robot is doing what the user wants it to do? So the methods in this stage would be obviously lean thinking techniques how you can streamline and improve on the process. Also, root cause workshops would be useful because maybe by solving the root cause, you can solve the current process and many other processes. And the other would be ensuring that documents are clear and unambiguous, making sure that they capture everything that the developer will need to build a robust automation. So that takes us on to the next stage, the third stage, which is to build, building robust automations. And this is where the developer would use best practices to make sure that they're building something that's robust and is easy to support as well. The developer should always have that, that end game and what happens next mindset. You can check that video where we cover the developer best practices. So there are three things that you want to put into building a robot. You want to make sure it's modular code or built in components so that firstly, these components are reusable like login and logout, download customer data or upload customer data. By building it in components, it's reusable. Each component is reusable, but it's also easier for the developer to test each component as they go along and building one component at a time and testing as they go. And additional to that is that it makes it a whole lot easier for that automation, which is built into components, to be supported. Because when you have a component and an error happens within that component, the description of the error should say it was the error happened in the login part or the error happened when we tried to upload. So it's very easy, as you can see, for a support person to know exactly what part of the code they need to zoom into and fix that bug. So it's just really easy to navigate and to understand someone else's code. The second thing in the build stage is system integration testing. As I mentioned before, this is where the developer is testing each component to make sure that each component works on its own and then test the process end to end, all those components linked together. And then they would have a pair, they would have it pair reviewed or code reviewed by another developer or the lead developer to make sure that it makes sense. And then the final part of building a robot is the user acceptance testing, the UAT phase. And this is where the user, the business person, the business process owner, or the business or the process expert, they test the robot, they look at the outputs, and they confirm whether they're happy with how the automation has behaved and the results it gave, and it acted as expected. So in the build stage, there are, again, several tools. The solution design document, or the SDD, 
is the, what the developer uses to design the architecture of the robot and put all the, all the details there of the process that they would then pass over to the support team who would use that to maintain and fix that robot if anything went wrong in the future. Then you've got standard development best practices. And it's important to have this standardized so that if you've got a team of 10, 20 developers, they're all working to the exact same way. So different developers can peer review each other's work. It's easier for different developers to peer review other, other developers' work because it's been coded and built and compiled in the same way. And it also makes it easier to change developers or have developers cover other people in their absence. Also in the, in the build stage, you need a test plan. So in the previous stage, we had the test cases and the test data. And now the test plan is how do you test? What are you testing? And what is the outcome we expect? And it's in a very clear format so that the user, the business uh, process expert, knows exactly what they're doing and what they're looking for during that user acceptance testing. And then finally, you'll have a bug report and, and quality assurance. And this is where anything that comes out of the user acceptance test is recorded and passed back over to the developer to fix the list of bugs that were, were identified. And then once you have passed the quality checks, now you know that your automation is good to launch. So the final step is launch. And this is the most important step because automation can act differently in the live environment once you've launched it, very differently to how it acted in test. And this could be many different reasons due to the types of data that one in the test, one included in the test, or potentially the live environment just might have an application version which is slightly newer than what you have in the test environment. Either way, you have your go, no-go decision after the automation has passed you at stage, and then you decide whether you want to launch or not, and then you create a launch plan. Uh, how do you scale up the work? You may not, especially if it's a critical process, you may not want to feed the automation all the cases that it could possibly handle. You may want to scale up by value. So we'll just see how, how the automation responds to transactions of $100 or, or, or less. And then you could, after that's successful, you could scale up to value transactional values of a thousand dollars or more and you can do the same with cases if the team gets a thousands of cases a day you could start with just feeding the automation a hundred cases and then increase up to a thousand cases and beyond once you're comfortable and the business is comfortable that the robot is behaving well and this is what we call hypercare phase it may be called the warranty period of post go live. But this is where the developer and the analyst team are supporting and babysitting the automation just to make sure that now that it's launched, it's still behaving well. Then you use what's called exit criteria. This is specific criteria that both the business and the automation team have agreed on that it has to pass in order to hand it over to the business and the support team. Okay guys, I hope you got real great value from that short video and you understand the benefit of having a set toolkit because this is gonna help you have predictable outputs at each stage. And when you couple a standardized toolkit and templates with a standardized process of when and how to use these tools, that's when you'll get consistency. And if at each stage, you have checkpoints. This enforces that the tools are used in the correct way and only high quality is getting through so that you have control that at the end, you have delivered robust automation. So with a standardized toolkit, a standardized process for implementation and checkpoint criteria, so you build in those controls, your team will be able to repeatedly implement automation with their eyes closed and you'll be able to deliver at speed and allow you to scale. Okay guys, don't forget to click on the link in the bottom below so that you can download the toolkit 
cheat sheet. So just click, click the link below in the description. But I hope that was valuable. If you like this video, click the like button and see you in the next video. Take care.